Kirk Hilliard. And this is Rusty Bird. It's the Kirk and Bird Show. And we've got a special episode today. Uh, what we want to do today is we want to actually uh, celebrate the life of former Bethel Bruin great John Britt. And so we've uh, put together a panel of former Bruin uh, uh, legends that played at Bethel High School with, um, with John and we have his brother. So I wanna first start out by introducing uh, Jason Wallace. Jason was an outstanding player at uh, Bethel, um, played at the University of Virginia, went on to play professional football and in class 87 was shaded. I think we might be frozen again if we're not. Thank you for having me. Um, uh, another true Bruin legend. He was a one. Well, if you know anything about Bethel, he wore eighty one, mm -hmm. and he was. I mean, he was one of the great linebackers uh, in Bethel High School history. Um, class eighty five. I was, you know, blessed to play with this this dude, and uh, and he's the brother of John Britt. That is Terrell Britt, another Bethel legend. Thank you, uh, Terrell, for joining the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate yeah. it. Oh yeah, yeah. So what we want to do, man, if, if for those that don't know, John Britt um, played high school football at Bethel High School. He graduated in 84, went on to play college football at East Carolina, Hampton University, and he played some professional football. Uh, unfortunately, um, John recently passed away. And, um, you know, we've decided to do an episode, first time we've done it, do an episode um, to, to basically have a celebration of his life, honor what John meant um, to that Bethel community, but but beyond that, what he meant to Hampton Roads, um, you know, as, as an athlete, but, but as, a man, as a student. So we we are very very happy to be able to discuss his life. We have got this format, and so we wanted to do it. And it's not gonna be a sad thing. We're gonna celebrate his life. We're gonna tell some stories. We're gonna joke. Um, and so this, this is all about having some fun. We're gonna, and you'll learn a little bit more about John and these guys here. So thanks again, guys, for joining. I do wanna ask um, that if you haven't, please subscribe to the Kirk and Bird Show. We've been out a little over a year and we, we've done very well because of support of, of our great fans. Um, so all you have to do is on that YouTube channel, just click subscribe. Please feel free to comment. And, and beyond this show, uh, feel free to uh, tell Kirk that he has some bad takes. All right. <laughs> all right. All right. So look, man, let's get started. Um, Terrell, we'll start with you, man. I mean, you clearly more than any of us knows um, your brother, John, uh, can you tell us a little bit about you guys growing up um, in Hampton? Well, yeah, we grew up off of Brownfield Road and like you said, sports. We started off with Maui Little League, Jimbo. Yeah. Not sure if you guys remember him. He was a quarterback for uh, Hampton High School when we were playing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so Jimbo's dad kind of got us into sports. And then, like you said, we started off at Maori Little League. And then we just went on from there. And then I heard somebody talking about Fox Hill earlier. Like, <laughs> <laughs> we went down there. I think that might have been Greg talking about it, But we went down yeah. there and we played, you know. We were winning, uh -huh. you know. Yeah. And we set standard from Little League growing up. And then, like you said, we went to Lindsay Junior High School. Um, and then they cut out sports. Yeah. And then when my brother was a sophomore, I was a, I was a, a junior going to uh, Jeff Davidson because they changed the zone. And then oh. that's when everybody, yeah, you know, we were supposed to go to Hampton High School. That's right. And then, then all the coaches that were at Lindsay, some of them transitioned over to Hampton. Mm. Okay. I, as a kid, I actually grew up right across the street from Robert E. Lee. I went to yeah. Robert E. Lee. And I used to go to the uh, Lindsay games and I just knew my whole life I was going to be a crabber. Right. And I got separated and we ended up uh, years later in the Bethel zone. But yep. uh, I just thought, I mean, I used to look up to the Lindsay teams, man. That was some fun. That junior high football was serious. Yeah. Yeah. Coach White, Coach Brow, David Blizzard, Frank Owens, all those coaches, you know, they end up, oh, transi yeah. they end up transitioning to going to Hampton High School. They went to Davis, you know, and then the coaches, 
how you how you go back and think about it, some of the coaches' wives were like at Lindsay. Mm-hmm. You know, they they were keeping tabs on the guys, telling them who was coming, how they <laughs> helping out Alvis man. Um, was coaching at Hampton. His wife was like some type of uh, PE teacher or something she did. Miss Cheryl Griffin and all of them, they were all tied to Hampton. They were telling, hey, these guys will be coming to you over there. So they kept tabs on the kids. It's a little different today with the teachers, but, you know, they always there to support you and tell you when you're doing wrong and stuff like that. What well, didn't yeah. didn't um, Briarfield Road became Bethel when you crossed? Was it Aberdeen with the post offices? Yeah, when you go to the other side, right there, when you're going back to Briarfield Park from the yep. Bojangles back. Yeah, yard. Did you guys play a lot of like tackle football just in the neighborhood? What was that? Well, like? they started playing that when we got old, a little older. They did play. I'm not sure if you guys remember Linwood Lunkins and George Lunkins. <laughs> yeah. They play football in their backyard. Uh, <laughs> yeah, James Hayne, he went to Hampton as well. So, you know, we was always doing something in the neighborhood. Or like you said, when it became track, you know, we were Henry Case and all those guys, they running the 440 relay in the neighborhood. In the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was funny, you know, so yeah, it was a small world. Wow. So, so Greg, t- tell us um, a little bit about some of your experiences with John and Terrell back in the day. Oh man, Terrell, I, I only had a lot of experience with Terrell around school. Right. But, you know, John. <laughs> Bad experience in school and out of school. <laughs> hey, you see how I'm laughing. So <laughs> we, I I said, I him. Editing, but we still try to keep it a little PG 13. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. See, half of the experiences with John, I can't even tell you. Right. Um, but uh just just being around John, John, man, John had one of those spirits, man, that um, you know, just being around him, man, he gonna rub off on you. Somewhere, yeah. if you out with him, somewhere you might be a little wild by the time y'all finish the night, too. Right. So let, me, let me put it like that, and that's the mile as I can put it. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun and you know, school and but sports. Um not knowing until it took him to pass away to really figure all of this out, right? Um, John, uh, I've been playing against John, man, I probably since he started sports. Mm. Because I I played with John Tyler. Um, I played with with not Eaton Middle School, but they had a rec team. That's who I played for. I I played with Alvin Jones. His dad was our coach. Okay. So I, played so I've, been it, I played against, um, I've been playing against. Go, go ahead, Rusty. I'm sorry. No, no, no. I'm, I didn't even know that. See, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah that's there. what I'm saying. We all connected I mean, in some way. I played with Craig Overton, but I used to look up to Rodney Overton. Rod O, Rod O, yeah, and Craig. Yeah, man. Rod O and Craig. Yeah. Yes. Over at Hampton. Yep, See, that's man. the thing. That's the thing I was saying. We all connected like that. So that's what made. That's what made us as good as we are or as good as we were when we were doing what we did. So I was explaining to you earlier, like Terrell was saying that, you know, you played in the neighborhoods, you had Lincoln Park and Horizon Plaza side by side. Mm -hmm. So Leslie Bailey, Terry Mm -hmm. Noel, and some some of them other cats grew up in Horizon Plaza. So Horizon Plaza and Lincoln Park, used to play tackle football after we have a game on Saturdays <laughs> home and play Lincoln Park against Horizon Plaza, more football. I was, I was explaining that to my son. That's the difference in me when I was your age and you now. You can't, you don't go outside. You go outside, yeah. you have me go out there and wear me out <laughs> all day. You don't go outside with, you got one or two friends, but we had enough friends to make a team. Yeah. And play a game basketball, football, whatever we wanted to play. So, but getting back to John, yeah, we had a lot of good times with John. I played some 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 good football with John, you know, those years at Bethel. And um, I can tell you, man, I remember, <laughs> I remember this, uh, Jason just told you a story about John, um, Terrell. John played in 84, he played 
It was 84 or 83. He played with two casts, rubber mm -hmm. casts, casts on each arm. Yeah. Who does that? Who does that, man? That, he, there was a picture in the paper of that. Yeah, yes. it was. I was going to say there's a picture in the paper that's sitting on the bench. Sitting Any on the bench. Person, yeah. yeah, man. Any and other person would have said, man, I'm out for the season. Yep. I'm out for at least, <laughs> I don't know how many games. Yeah. That mentality of John on and off the field. So, yeah. you know, hey, whether I'm going in the battle or whether I'm just happy, I'd rather be with him. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather be with him. Yeah, because I think that um, when they start playing with the cast, you know, they kept trying to say he had metal on the cast and this and right. that. No, and then Cos, you know, Coach Cos was speaking up for him, and he yeah. said, "No, right. you know, he got just tape on it." They and said, then, yeah, you know, I, "Even like even when it got down to the end, they kept you know, going like back." Yeah. yeah, I mean, the referees kept, but the referees would stop the game to go check, right. go check his cast, check yeah. those casts. Yeah. 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 yeah, I remember that. Crazy. That's true. So, but the referees had they had within their rights, they had all the rights. To check that dude, <laughs> not for metal or stuff like that, but that's how he played. Yeah, you right. play, you think yeah, he you're not like, finished. By the time he finished with you, you gonna think you you gonna think he crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so Greg Terrell, that's your brother, Greg. You're a peer, but let let me hear from Jay Wallace, my man, class of '87. You know, that, now now Jason, you have an older brother that. When did when did Eric come out? 81? Yeah. Eric came out in 81. Yep. 81. So did Eric play with John? No. No. Mm -mm. A couple years. Walter ago. Bailey. Walter Bailey and Tim Roar did. That's right. Here we go. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. Cool. And, so, and, so, and Eric played with Walter Bailey and, and Tim Roar and right. uh you know all, all, uh you know the Bob the Gale, Will. uh John uh, Sean I, I Gale. Sean yeah. Hill. Okay. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Hush, yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah. so Jimmy, Jimmy, so Jason, uh, Jimmy Williams. Jimmy Hush, Williams, yeah. Jimmy. Yeah. So Jason, yeah. you but you so you 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 were a part of that watching that brewing uh football for years. Okay. And then you finally get get there and, and, and because of your brother's experience and they got rid of junior high school football, yeah. you went and you were one of the first or the few to ever play football at Bethel in the eighth grade. I remember playing against you when I was at Eaton, you were at Mount, and we yeah. used to battle. Now, we didn't win a lot. <clears throat> and we clearly had the talent, because when those guys went to Hampton, they won state championships. And yeah. some of them came over to, to Bethel too. But yeah. tell us about when you got to Bethel as, a, as an eighth grader. It was, it was a different world, man. I mean, to go from literally going from intermediates in Little League, <laughs> playing, at, <laughs> playing at Gosnell Hope Park for, wow. Mallory Bing, for the Mallory Bengal Tigers, mm -hmm. to going to, to Bethel and, and, and watching guys like John and Terrell and Greg up close and personal, it was a, it was a different world. But it was one of those things, man. I, I, I don't know what, what it was about me, but I was a sponge to, to learn to watching and learning from guys that I thought were the the elite of the elite. And John was at the top of that list, man. And um, yeah, I, I what I learned from John was the intensity that it took to play at a high level, because he brought it every down, every play. Mm. And the other thing that not a lot of people talk about, but John and Terrell were technicians in terms of form tackling. Yeah. And hitting that, I remember watching them hit that sled and how they would roll them hips and and, and and drive through guys like you were really trying to hit some an object two three yards behind where the dude was it was it was textbook tackling and being a small dude 
I was I, I was just absorbing all all of that, man. And it was it was it was art, dude. It, I, I can't. There's no other way for me to explain it. Watching John Britt hit somebody was it, it was art in in motion, man. And uh, his form was just was just perfect. And and I, I I learned a lot from from watching him. Yeah, yeah. I mean. Though, again, I, I didn't get there until the next year after he graduated. So I, I was still, you know, I, I, ninth grade, I'm looking up to all these guys. So I'm watching Greg. I'm watching, I'm going to these games. And I'm and these are still like my heroes. And I even said this when Rodney and I was like, when I got there, first of all, I didn't. I, so I, I first played for Eaton. Um, but then we moved a couple of times and then I ended playing um, my last year at Northampton for Coach Inca. And um, we won the championship, but we had players from that went on to play at Hampton, Kickatan, Bethel. And we had some really good players. And um, but I remember after my our last game, at, uh, we won the championship and then we played in some bowl game up in Delaware. I was like, I guess my career is over. And um, Coach Morgan. He's like, what? I was like, man, I can't play with against those guys. He said, boy, yes, you can. You, you better go out there and play play football. And 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 it was, you know, it was it was a blessing because these same guys I kind of looked up to, they they although you had to bring, you had to be a dog on the field, they were still nurturing when we started that summer and we're lifting weights and they're pushing you. And, you know, I was trying to be in the 110 club, man, you know, and I actually made it as a 10th grader, but I'm still looking up to these guys. And, but I realized like, when I look back, it's like, you know, they were making me better. And, and I remember just like, when we had those two a days, man, I would never forget this. And I, I said, remember we will be, you know, hitting under the, that gate but you shoot. When, if you get to shoot, this is the thing that I remember. Now, I didn't get to play with John, but I'm glad I didn't if he did this. Do y'all remember D.D. Van being the airplane? Yeah. Like, if you oh. weren't paying attention, if you just weren't looking, he could come and he had the coaches didn't mind. He would just take you out. Um, they, there's no way they could do, we could do that now. But those are the type of things that I remember and I hold on to. And just like you say, I the Terrell Britt form and tackling and the battles that are, we had in practice, in practice. So, um, and, and the last thing is not about me. I want to talk about, I want to get back to John, but I will say this as a 10th grader, I eventually, I was on the roster and I dressed off all the varsity games and by the end of the year I played, but I remember before we played Hampton the second time and I was the scout team Linwood Lumpkins. And man, y'all did not take it. He, it was like, I would get the ball and y'all just crushed me. And I was, but I, I look back and it's just a blessing to know that if I could play with those guys, man, you know, I could play, you know, right. but, but, but tell me Terrell and Greg, when you guys got there, what was it like when you first got into to, to Bethel and what was it like playing for coach Cobbs? And how did John feel about playing for Coach Cobb? And we keep it clean, but I mean, Cobb impacted all of us in different ways. But I think some of Cobb that we grew from it. Really loved John, you know. He, sure he did. I mean, he sure I mean, did. on him, but that was like his son from another mother, you know. Yeah. And it was always, hey, you want you to do this, want you to do that, and he wanted to make sure John was doing right going to school because he had potential. And like I say, you know, he was just like another father away from home. And they, they had their quirks about each other, I guess. But at the end of the day, they were thick as thieves. I could say him and Cos, you yeah. know, and it was like All-American linebacker. And I remember when we played Holland Springs, they had Brian Washington. And well, Coach Shaw <laughs> said, Bus, you are All-American and he are All-American. He said, "You going? We going to see who going to have the best, you know." And Brown was a good defensive back too, you know. Yeah. And uh, uh, it's just the, I guess, the teamwork that they did and how they looked up to him. And Kaz didn't know he had to keep Liz John under the radar, you know, because you know my brother. <laughs> sometimes he could he could go off the deep end, but he, he knew he had to keep him under the radar and keep yeah. him straight. And John listened to him, you know. 
best way I could say it over the air, I guess. Yeah, they had, they had a they had a great respect for each other, man. They, they, yeah. I, I could you could you could see that, and and I will tell you the one thing that was what was 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 crazy was y'all remember how we used to watch that Dick Buckers film? Yes, for yes. four games, Ooh. four games. <laughs> uh, you know who was right there in the front row was John Britt, and uh, if there was anybody that emulated what Dick Buckers was doing, it. On the on the field, it was John oh, yeah. Britt. Oh, oh for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. To um to 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 add on to what Terrell and Jay was saying, um, man, Cars loved that dude. Oh yeah. Cars absolutely loved that dude. That dude had range. That dude had range to do what he wanted at school, to do what he wanted on the field. Because of cars. Yeah. That dude was protected from anything at Bethel because of cars. Cars absolutely loved that dude. Yeah, that's, that's point true. blank. That's point yeah. blank. Cars love all his players. Yeah, but it is some of love all his players. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Hey man, John, John was under his wing. Yeah. John, he he saw, I think cars saw a lot of that toughness from itself in John. Right. You know, I remember the funeral, yeah, I remember at the funeral, Hot Shot Williams was there. And he made that same comment, what you're saying there, Greg. He said, Kyle said, make sure he's in class. <laughs> Hot <laughs> Shot, Hot class. Shot come up to the car. He said, hey, man, I just want to tell you, Kyle always told me to make sure John was in class. Yeah. yeah. He's, he ain't nowhere else. Make sure he go to class. I, I didn't know that. To yeah. hot shot. Hot hey, shot man. Said, I want yeah. him to do what he had to do. You know, he, I just said, wow, yeah. you know, cause, you know, yeah. if we did something wrong, cause will know before the end of the day. Man, he's going to know. Yeah, he's going to know. know. It, it, it had to go through him. Even though yeah. we had principals in that school, it had oh, to go yeah. through cause. Yeah. It had to go through cause, and cause really made those decisions. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So when yeah. it was necessary, he went on, let them do what they had to do to you. But Cos made those decisions. Probably like Mike Smith being the dean of boys at Hampton. Right. <laughs> right. I, I, I was just there to ask, who, who was the AD when you guys, did you have one AD throughout the- It was Cos. I thought that's yeah. what I asked, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just look. Yeah. Go ahead, too. No, I was just saying Cos was the AD back then, yeah. you know? And he the, ran. Nowadays, the a, they had the AD. That's their only job. Coach Ooh. Cos coached. Oh yeah, football, right. indoor, outdoor track. Right. He was the AD and an English teacher. Right. right. He didn't just coach. I mean, he didn't just teach any old class. Like he taught English. Right. English. Right. right. That was that surprised me. I was like, you not a PE teacher or a shop <laughs> or something like this. Right. This man know English. Yeah. 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 You know, that's, okay. how, yeah that's that's why he could, he could berate you. He could berate you, and you know, with using the right. Uh, yes. <laughs> I re he knew them big college words too. Cause do you remember our eighty, our junior year, uh, uh, Jason? After having the giant team we had in with Terrell's class, he in the article we were called the Lilliputians. <laughs> like who knew what that word? I mean. Y'all right. know, y'all know. He all taught us about psycho cybernetics. Psycho yeah. I, <laughs> I have coached football for the last like fifteen years, uh, whether it was youth, you know, middle school, flag, whatever. And I'm always like psycho cybernetics, and people be looking at me like, "What?" And I say, "Now look, you got to think positive." My coach told me this psycho cybernetics. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, uh, that's a that's a heck of a dude, but um. John was one of his favorites. John was one of his favorites, yeah, no doubt. I would say that John probably reminded him of those teams in the 70s and even probably Cosmos playing days in the 60s where you just, like, those were the guys that just were well-respected. And I think Coach Cos could appreciate that, you know? <laughs> Yeah. And, 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 you know, not, I mean, we're all old school now, but I think, you know, 
what I I still and I saw it recently, but before I, that, that that picture of him with the cast on like is embedded in my brain, man. And I just it is a couple of pictures from Bethel, whether it was those state championship teams in the seventies. It's like that meant Bethel football. Yeah. Certain numbers at Bethel that are untouchable unless you earn the right to wear them. And John, number 81, was was at the top of that list. And no doubt. He, made, he made that number uh, become something that you aspired to. Whatever, whatever, and the number 10 was the other. It was, it was two, those two numbers that if you look in history at Bethel, Bethel High School, the, the best of the of each class are aware right. of those numbers. And uh John was the first of, of, of that tradition that, that I can remember. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. And it, and it was definitely and it was something we knew in that, that football community, but people knew it outside too. Like once that became that thing, like you know, the other schools, like you knew, okay, that's their dog. That's their dog. And yeah, and then in history shows like. You go on that Jason Ward 10, Allen Iverson Ward 10, you know, 81s were, um, I know my brother Ward, what's his name, Ward after him, um, he went and played at Wake Forest, but there were definitely, and then if nobody deserved it, nobody got that number. <laughs> and and I believe before John was, uh, was it Tim Roar Tim Roar that Tim, wore 81? Tim, Tim, yeah, yeah, Tim, Tim Roar wore 81. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah Tim Roar. Yeah. Yeah. So that you're right. Thanks for bringing that up, Jason. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, uh, tell us, Greg. Let's go go back to some of the times when you were, you and, and him, and you, John, and Terrell were playing. Tell us about maybe a Hampton Bethel game or a big game, and and just some of the things that might have happened that would that would that, that people may not have uh, been aware of. Um. Well, I don't know. <laughs> I will tell you this: with I don't know if y'all missed this tradition, but I think we was the last of this tradition. To I don't know if you remember, we used to get a steak dinner. Yeah, yeah. steak dinner before we 40. played Hampton on Saturday. Yeah, we I remember that. That trail. Yeah, we used to get a steak dinner. Yeah, so I, yeah. So I remember. I remember those. Uh, just, just practice. You know, I remember. You know those two, those two dudes, man, being across from you. You know they won't, <laughs> they wasn't across from me at the same time in practice most of the time, because I think Terrell, you played fullback a little, didn't you? Yeah, a little for the fullback, yeah. Yeah, so they were both of them won't across from me, but when both of them was across from you, man, hey, I was telling Terrell at the funeral. I didn't know if he remembered it or not. Um, one time I was playing second team running back, tailback. And I wasn't even really in the play. <laughs> I kind of, the play went the opposite way. I kind of flared out. So, you know, you don't really get a whole lot of hits on Kyle's quarterbacks. So Terrell caught me. <laughs> he caught me. I thought I was on the stretcher. <laughs> I had the ground piss, but I got up. You know, I got up and I, I knew what it was. Hey man, hey, you ain't off limits when you ain't got that, you ain't in that first position. You know, so yeah. just memories like that. And, and you know, I just knew John, I stayed away because I knew if I came around there, he was going to catch me. You know, just just playing with those guys, they kept you, they kept you rough, kept you on your toes. They made you the best you could be, you know. So, you know, just those memories and like you say, that shoot. That shoot and I um, don't, you know, over everybody's voice, you can hear John. Yeah. Terrell, Terrell was a quiet assassin. You don't hear him much, but you better look out. That's right. But I'm, I'm, that's the other thing, y'all, John, remember, y'all remember Kenny Taylor, right? Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. He, he always wanted to run the ball. You know, he said, guys, give me the ball, give me the ball, give me the ball. Uh, <laughs> Kenny Taylor, they did an end around. <laughs> and he come back through the center. And like that guy said at the funeral, it sound like two Rams, but here. <laughs> John hit Kenny so hard. Kenny was a big dude. 
Yeah, Kenny Taylor. He hit Kenny Taylor so hard, he took his helmet off and threw it on the ground. I think his head was ringing. Yeah, yeah. Let yeah. y'all met him like right in the hole. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, see, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Stuff like that, you know, I knew I didn't want no part of that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was funny, though. It was funny I, at the time, I'm, and I get it. Yeah. You know, they can't do that, but it's just something about it. If he get a beeline on you, he, he hey, man. in the hole, he, he coming full force. You know, oh. like I tell people, before Ray Lewis, before all of that, because oh, Lejean got recruited by the University of Miami, but they won't do him well then. The guy yeah. came down and talked to him with cars, and he kind of shunned away from it. But, you know, those guys came down and talked to him and said, well, you know, you come down here to the U, and Lejean, you know, like I said, if he going to hit you, you going to know he going to hit you, you know. Man, what are you saying? <laughs> man, was, like you said, he had the cast on. We played Hampton High. I don't know if it was Kevin Gould or somebody in there. Then they tried to, you know, like mess with John. I think he swung that cast around on him. You know, hit, <laughs> hit him right in the head. Hey, you know, he yeah, playing, you know, man. yeah. Then uh, the referees yeah. was always trying to say something. You know, he like Greg said, using it as a weapon, mm-hmm. using it as a weapon. You know. And they could yeah. never say nothing because once they checked it, it had no metal in it. It was just all yeah. rubble. All rubble. Yeah. Rubber and tape. Rubber and my mama, and you know, to this day, she they still got those two casts. And Is that they had right? a shelf, they had a shelf in the garage. Wow. And he used to keep them up on that, you know. So I just like amazing. Wow. wow. Yeah. So yeah. those were uh those were my memories of them, Rusty. Um, you know, just just stuff like that and you know, like I said, we had some some good off the field memories, and oh yeah, you know, <laughs> he came home one time. I went back to East Carolina with him, and oh, well, I see, I didn't know that. Yeah, we had a ball. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I that's why I tried to tell the guys at the funeral. I said, you guys probably had more fun with my brother than I don't yeah. even know about. Yeah, I you know, because I hear people say, oh, I mean, I've been with your brother here, been down to Green Bay with him. Yeah. This have been somewhere everywhere, you know? Yeah. And he had fun, you know, like I just said, it was amazing. I said, the guys, come on, I said, man, I've been with your brother over here. I said, I didn't even know that, you know? So I just, he, he came home one weekend. I just happened to see him. He said, man, come on back to East Carolina with me. I said, man, I'm getting ready. I'm going to move to Denver, man. I'm going out there, and I got to get in school, John. I got to do something different, man. So right. I went to Carolina and stayed a week with him. I think two weeks later, I was out to Denver. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm not sure y'all remember this at Bethel. Jason might remember it, but Kaz, and I'm not sure if it was Terry Van, quarterback in that, that time, but they did an end around. You know, they got Ingo pulling as a – I think Ingo was a guard or a tackle. Uh-huh. And his daddy was at the practice. And you remember how Bethel football field, if you facing the shoot, the benches were to the left. Yeah. Uh-huh. Eagle came around that corner. And lit, like I say, my brother just got like a beeline on him. And he knocked <laughs> Eagle over by the bench. You yes, know, man. and Cos was like, like Greg said, Cos, Lil John was Cos' boy, you know, he yeah. was he was tight with him, but. When he laid ego out, he just started smiling, you know. Let me, and it was just a, it was just amazing, you know. I said, "Wow." Yeah, and me, like this. Well, I, I was just, I'll let you go, Greg. But I was just gonna point out, Inko's size back then was a massive, six right. two seventy. Right. Mean, right. Kids are three twenty now, six six, but Inko right. was huge. So that gives some context to what you're talking about. Go ahead, Greg. Yeah. Let me tell you this. Another thing. Now, just as well as Cos love John, Inko was his boy too. Correct. Correct. For him to see that, for him to see that and not chew John out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. John was his boy. Because yeah. Inko was his boy. Inko Correct. was his boy too. That man, those was his babies. Those was his projects. Right. The yeah, Inko, he, he uh, came around that corner, he laid Inko out. <laughs> you know, Inko, you I don't know if you know this or not, Inko had to get his helmet from Hampton, High, Hampton University. Yes. Oh, no. Oh, yeah, I heard that. I remember that. Yeah. His head was, he was so big and his head was so big, he had to get his helmet from Hampton University. I so we had that. monsters on our team, man. We had yeah. monsters. What about Grimes? Y'all remember Grimes? Vincent oh, yeah. Grimes, he came to the, he came over to visit John at the Washington. Yeah. 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 Okay, yeah, Grimes went to Virginia Tech. Man, we had yeah. a monster team, man. It was that was crazy, man. Yeah, we y'all were loaded, man. Loaded. Y'all, that '84 team was loaded with 
with three state track runners. Yeah. They had a stack uh, uh track um relay team, state champ relay team. Yeah. Um uh four by one hundred. Right. Myself, Zach, Rodney Howard, and uh Dexter Dexter Van Hook. Dexter Van Hook. He placed, yep. he placed in the state in the hurdles. Yep. Mm -hmm. So we had a team that was crazy, and those times we was running back then was like Olympic times. Mm -hmm. We was running yeah. college Olympic times back then. So we had a we had a backfield that was just crazy, man. You got these guys, man, who are already built like college players. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, coming at you that fast. Yeah, yeah. You know, so and football is not like it is today. You weren't right. protected, right? You, know, you weren't protected. No. And, and the crazy thing was the the amount of D one college. Not, Thank you, not, Jason. Not 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 recruiting coordinators, but I'm talking about D1 head coaches. Oh yeah, that will come to our practices to watch all of y'all was just it blew my mind. I, I, I it was crazy. I get home and I tell my brother or my dad, my mom, like, uh, you know, Joe Paterno was at Bethel today, <laughs> or, <laughs> or or you know, uh, what was the closest? Coach for Clemson back then. Um, Danny Ford. Danny Ford. Danny Terry Ford. Hall. Da Danny yeah. Ford was at Denny. Um. Uh. What's the from Carolina? His uh. Dick Crum. Dick, Dick, Dick Crum. You know, I mean, it it was it was phenomenal, man. And uh, you know, I the other thing, you talk about respect, and you're talking about paying it forward, and and Rusty, you were talking about how you. John and Terrell were teaching the young young guys. One thing, one thing John and Terrell, especially, but really John taught me was the sanctity of the locker room before a game. Mm -hmm. I, I remember John was about to knock somebody out for for for, for not taking that that, that sanctity yeah. and, and that brotherhood and that yeah. bond. Yeah. That that you had to go out and, and to the on on the field with in order to compete, and uh, I I can tell you I I tried to take I took that torch from 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 y'all's generation and tried to take that on and bring that on to and keep it going and, and my generation is something they probably don't even have a clue about, but y'all yeah. I know we can all all probably right now start singing that song. <laughs> Lean on me. Lean on me. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You said that. And we're like, not strong. Be your friend. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, the locker room lights out. Yeah. Lights out. You can't Everybody see holding nobody. Hands. You can't do nothing but fill That's them right. in. That's right. I forgot about that, Greg. You can't do nothing but fill them in here. That's it. Lights yeah. out. It's pitch dark in that. Under that stadium, it's pitch dark under them cement walls. Yep. Right. Pitch dark. You don't smell nothing but piss. Yeah. Right. And That's then before it. before you even got to the locker room, you had to walk off the bus and look at cars. That's and, right. uh, you oh, had yeah. to stare him in his eyes. That's yeah, right. said that when yeah, you, you had to show. stare him in his eyes and see if you're ready. Yep. Yep. And see then you in the locker room, the cleats start tapping on the concrete. Tap. They Tap. Start, I, I said Tap. that at the funeral. I said, Lino, they be saying lean on me. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. I've never seen that anywhere else. Yep. No. Anywhere we say the Lord's else. prayer and lean on me. Yep. Yeah. Lean yep. on me. Yeah, I've never seen that anywhere else. It was a lot of tradition at Bethel, man, that just, you know, and a lot of it I instill in my kids and stuff now. And I'm right. telling you, I, I, um, my son right now know everything about John Britt and Terrell Britt and some of them other guys at Bethel that I played with. You see, I brought them with me to the funeral, to John's yeah. funeral. Right. Yeah, because I want him yeah. to see that. I want right. him to see the unity. I said, man, I'm going to tell you, when I go back, it's gonna be some people here I haven't seen since high school, just because of this guy right here. I was right. explaining that to my son as we coming down the highway. I'm yeah, explaining that was, this. That was good stuff. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, man. I told him. I said I saw you. I said that. Was <coughs> right there, man. Hey, you, man. You know, dudes. When, when Jason talks about those uh, coaches coming to our practices and being around, like. In retrospect, we, I mean, we just kind of took it for granted. Like, we, this is what we do. But, like, if I, I just will try to tell people the guys I played with. And so I'm going from 
the fall of 84, so my 10th grade year, the whole amazing class of 1985, but then Fullwood 86 dudes, you get, and then 87, we got Jason, Beverly, Carl Francis, but Francis. then there were the guys that were behind us, Todd Kelly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I play, my, my brother, it, it was just, like, that, that was big time talent, but that was one school, bruh. If we, we were playing Hampton High School, and I remember like Linwood Lumpkins, Leslie Bailey, uh, Campbell, uh, I mean, Will Jeter, all these guys. That was one school, and, and it's a million of them going to kick a tan. They had, <laughs> you know, they had Dwight Holly or Bill Boyd, Doxy George, you know, Brando like. Pew. Yeah. Yeah, Brando Pew, Pew, yeah. 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 Pew. Yeah. yeah. They even yeah. had like, man, Mark Verniel. They had guys going to the major universities up and down the East Coast. And and those were just our boys. Like, okay, I just played against you. You played at Mallory, you played at Northampton, you played at Fox Hill. And then it was just kind of logical. Like those guys went and played big time ball. <laughs> you know, we yeah. they were great. You know. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. Yeah, Bear Bryant, I was just to say, Bear Bryant was in the city of Hampton. Tom Osborne came yeah. up. Times. I mean, Ben Bryant obviously got uh, Dwight Stevenson at Hampton, but that wasn't the only reason. He was there. And, and like you said, you never hear that now, you know? No. Never. Dabo Sweeney coming to a practice. I mean, th- it's hard for them to come. They, they can fly on a Friday night. They got that university. Yeah. Yeah. But to yeah. come during the week, I mean, those coaches like Kaz and Smith, I mean, the stories about who came through there was just amazing. Yeah. yeah. And, and and here's the other thing is that was inspiring at Bethel when you talk about tradition and 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 something that uh as soon as John left, y'all remember that wall walking into the locker into the locker room before you got to the locker room where you had all of the, the players' pictures. Yeah, yeah. And there and there's and, and what school they went to. Yep. Uh you know, I can remember seeing John's East Carolina. You, you know, a uh, 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 picture right up on that wall and uh, 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 right alongside all of those other guys. And, um, you know, it, it just lets you know as you walk into the locker room how deep the tradition was at Bethel. Yeah. And, and you know, I just wanted to do my part to be, to, to one day have my picture on that wall. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. 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 So, you know. so... Uh, Terrell, you touched on it, but tell us, like, what was John, John so some of the accolades he really received in high school. So he, he, he clearly all district, all region, all state, but, but tell us, but tell us, what was it? I don't know. I don't know necessarily. You said he was an All-American. Yeah, John was an All-American linebacker. Wow. Um, first true freshman to play at East Carolina before true freshmen were playing like they are today. Mm-hmm. You know, um, Ed Emery came down and recruited him. Um, like I said, Johnny Major from the University of Tennessee, um, guy from Michigan. And, you know, he went to all, he visited all, like, see the guys now, they finishing up their high school in December, going to college in January. Mm-hmm. Normally in December, you take all your visits to the different schools. Mm-hmm. So, you know, John went and visit all the schools. And Ed Emery flew him to East Carolina because he told me, I didn't want to drive. You know, that's the first time. Because you know, in East Carolina, not that far, you can get there by somebody yeah. picking you up. Mm-hmm. So yeah, like so, Lil John, you know, like you said, all American linebacker. You know, he he mm-hmm. ran a little bit of track, but you know, played a little bit of basketball. Like the guy said at the funeral, he was just that all around type of kind of guy. You know, mm-hmm. very charismatic. Everybody loved everybody loved John. You know, because he gonna have fun. He gonna he when it's time to be serious, he gonna be serious. But most mm-hmm. of the times, like you say, you know, he like having fun. And like yeah. I said, a lot of those guys have more fun times with, with my brother right. more than I probably did, yeah. you know. <laughs> you know and, I, and, I, and I said it in a joking way at the church. Some people yeah. picked up on it, some people didn't. And yeah. then my mama, my mama know more than I know, you know. <laughs> you know? And it's just the fun times that those guys, you know, Frankie Van, Dee Dee Van, we all grew up together. Yeah. You know, Weasel, yeah. One Person House, Lamont Burley, all those guys. It's just... Yeah. It's just that those things that those guys are doing back then, people getting paid off it on TV today. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like the break dancing. Yeah. You know, because when we were growing up, that you know, your parents tell you when you if you ain't going to school, you need to get you a job. Get you a <laughs> job. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> Lamont Burley, my brother, them they doing the flashlight, they doing all the different dances <laughs> and this and that. And yeah. you see, yeah, yeah, you see, America got talent now. You know, they going back <laughs> to my brother, them generation. You know, I know. Yeah. I remember one time we was living on Bourne Drive. And we had a party, you know. My dad let us have a block party. We had to get everybody's permission. And then, you know, so many people that come because they knew my brother. But yep. then this van came. And I guess, you know, back then, you know, people smoking weed won't like it is today, you know. My dad said, the party's over with. He shut it all down, you know. He said, everybody got to go home. And my dad said, my brother said, man, we just getting started. He said, the party is over with, son. <laughs> I never forget hey. that, but like you said, John was an All American linebacker. He made yeah. you know, all state. I mean, I mean, all district. And I think back when my brother was playing, I don't know if they had the All Star game. No, I don't think, I don't all, think so. Yeah, the All Star game wasn't in his so. year. Yeah, yeah you know, I, like I, it is happened. today. That you know, so he, he didn't. And then, like, they didn't have the what is that? The Under Armour All American no, right. stuff they didn't like have that. that. Right. We will see. We right. they, we didn't have all the TV and the Facebook uh, and social uh, media. Yeah. If, even if my brother, you know, because I was back in the eighties, you know, still yeah. coming around. Look at what we could have done with yeah. our group oh, oh. if we had Terrell, all the stuff that, huh? Terrell, think about this. It's nothing for people now to take a picture or at any time or have video. Imagine if we just had access to all of his highlights, his high school film, like the yeah. hits. Like, right. it, like I, I go to my game, my, my, my son's coach is recording, but I can record the whole game on my iPad mm-hmm. and it can live forever. You know right. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah just like you saw the movie Blindside. When it got Johnny Majors, I wasn't at home, but my mama told him Johnny Majors came over to, to offer my brother scholarship at home. I wasn't mm-hmm. there. And she said he took him back to the room to talk to him. Mm-hmm. You know, you want to see mm-hmm. how he was living. He went in his bedroom because my mama don't let nobody go past the bathroom back there. <laughs> John the Major's in the back talking to my brother, you know. And he, he visited there, and it was just that back then, you know, they only had one radio station for African Americans. Yeah. And then I guess he was dating a girl. I thought he's always going to be too far from her. But then Ed Emery kind of like won him over. And yeah. then when Ed was at East Carolina, then, you know, he got an altercation. They let him go. Then the program started going down. Then they started building it back up. But yeah, yeah Johnny Majors came to the house to talk to my brother. I said, well, "Wow, well, you know, Terrell, I, I I don't know if you know, but are you talking about Ed Henry? That was the the high school coach. He was a high school coach. Ed Henry was a high school coach. Yeah, and he, he was the head coach Marshall, at East Northern Carolina. Virginia. Yeah, in Northern Virginia for, at uh, what, Marshall in Northern Virginia. Marshall, yeah. Uh, is that that where that that's where they did that movie? They yeah the movie, yeah. Know, yeah, yeah. Right. So, so that that same Ed Henry was at Virginia when I was there. Yeah. Uh, oh, he, he yeah. wasn't coaching. He wasn't coaching, but he was in the, on the administrative staff, and is the is is one of the reasons why. You know, I, I had success at Virginia. I mean, this man was. It, it was just one of those great, great guys. You know, a great right. man to t- take care of you. So, uh, yeah. that's that's a, that's a connection, man. Wow. Uh, we, we, we've just been joined by <clears throat> another Bruin legend, <clears throat> uh, a guy who's been on the show, but he, he, a great football player who played at Bethel, played at the Naval Academy, and is doing big things in, in the real world. Um, and I got to give him credit for even the the, 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 the the thought to put this together. That's Mr. Darren Fullwood. Thanks for joining right. us, Darren. I'm Mr. sure Bird, you're close Mr. Bird, Kirk, how y'all field. doing, hey, sir? Hey, Darren, how you doing? Oh, yeah. look, 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 yeah, look, at bru- look at all that brewing pride out there, man. Yeah. Yeah. Juice, yeah. juice, yeah. juice. You probably, you were probably late for us because you were having a meeting with Jeff Bezos. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Me, me and Jeff talked about a few things, you know? <laughs> if he buys skins, he's going to make you the GM. <laughs> I, I, I told, I told him to let me go. I'm sorry. Tell everybody the so, context of why we're talking about Jeff Bezos. So, so Dan, we were just reflecting on some of our uh, stories of John and just the times playing at Bethel. Um, is there anything that kind of sticks out to you? Yeah, you know, I, um, 
I, I, first, first and foremost, uh, you know, my, my prayers still go up to the Brit family and to all of those who have been affected by, by this loss. Um, you know, this, this one hit me, hit me personally pretty hard. And, and, you know, I, I went to the funeral and, um, and one of the statements that I made was that, you know, I'm the worst at giving people their flowers while they are alive. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, for, I, I, I would tell you for the last 30 years of my life, I've used John Britt's name in conversation some 300, 400 times. And, um, you know, having gone to the Naval Academy, which I'll call Leadership University, right? Um, John showed me what a leader was. John showed me how to be a leader. You know, I was a freshman and sophomore when he was a junior and senior. So, of course, just being a freshman and sophomore, you look up to the juniors and seniors, right? And uh, two two events stick out. One um, one was I was on the sideline goofing off. We were, we were losing to Ferguson, and I was talking junk about how sorry we were. <laughs> and, uh, and John double-fisted me with, with his pass. <laughs> and, 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 and was very clear that, you know, no matter what was going on, that, um, you know, when you're going through adversity, that's, that's when, you know, you have to be strong and you have to be great. Mm -hmm. And I never forgot that. I remembered that, you know, so I took that with me to, to Navy. Another event that happened, um, and uh, Dexter Van Hook reminded me of this event <laughs> when, I, when, when I was down home, back home. Um, we my sophomore year, we played Warwick High School at Todd Stadium. And I fumbled the ball on the one yard line. And I was just to totally pitiful um, at, at that point. And, you know, I just, I, in, in my heart, I felt like I had just let everybody down, you know, and really changed the course of that season. And the first person to, to be like, yo, keep your head up. We're gonna we're gonna finish this season strong. You know, don't don't uh, you know that let that go. That was John Britt. You know what I'm saying? So those were two events that I took with me when I went to the Naval Academy, where I was saying to myself, you know, you know, I would I would meet somebody that was all state or something from Nebraska or Idaho and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, Yeah, I hear you, man. I, I hear you got all them accolades, but you ain't no John Britt. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and and so that that became my my rallying cry over the years. And I, and, and this is the true statement, man, like in, in my business life, you know, I, I think about some of those leadership qualities that he displayed, you know, uh, at Bethel high school. And I try to use them even, you know, even at Amazon. Good deal. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Hey, it's, hey it's, Darren, cool. Darren, one of the things that um, I, I talked about earlier was that, that I learned from John was, the sanctity of the locker room before before a football game, and and and, and we all can sit here and, and recite all the words to <laughs> lean on lean me. On me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I, I don't know if, if you have, if you want to share any any, any thoughts or feelings of, of, about the, that that tradition. Man, I, I, I have to tell you, man, like. You know, and again, coming from the Peninsula District, right, and going off and doing other things, it just was never the same, man. You know, like with with the way John and that crew would get us ready to play was just unbelievable. I was, it was an out of body experience, and when I, I mean, you know, dudes, some of the hardest dudes I know, you know, would be in the locker room crying, you know, would be with like literally just losing their mind to get out that locker room and to hit the field, you know what I'm saying? And I'll be the first one to tell you, man, you know, you know, I played in some great rivalry games, you know, like you know, Notre Dame uh, against Army. It never felt like, it never felt like coming out of that uh, Dolan Stadium uh, locker room, uh, you know, I, I never had a feeling like it was to play the Hampton Crabbers, you know, yeah, and John and, John and eight, number eighty-one leading the way out of that locker room, man. So, uh, you know, just just uh, I could I could only just say great things uh, about that about that fella, man. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah, yeah, man. Thank you, thank you for. Um, I, I wanted to to um, also kind of talk a little bit about some of the times you know the times after um, 
John left Bethel. We know he played at East Carolina, but then he went on to play at Hampton University. Tell us a little bit about that time. When, when John left East Carolina, he transferred um, to Hampton and he had like a fracture or something and his leg didn't put a cast on it. So he didn't, he played maybe a year. He was there and then he ended up going to semi-pro. So he didn't stay there the whole three and a half years. So most of his time was okay. at East Carolina as far as his accolades and stuff like that. But um, Coach Freeman was the coach at Hampton University. And he told me he wanted him to come play there, you know, because, you know, John didn't even talk to Hampton University back when he was going through his recruiting and all. And then I think Fred Freeman got there. Then they wanted to see our double A and then he ended up coming. But he, he didn't play a full season there. Okay. I was reading the article that was talking about him, um, about the time he played semi-pro football, but he was describing, you know, what happened in Hampton. And, you know, because he was talking about, like, the injury and and if it had been addressed earlier and he could heal properly. But right. that's something a lot of us went through. Like, we just – we were – taught to play through stuff. And we didn't even know how severe it was. Like, I mean, especially like concussions. Like I know John, uh, T- I mean, Terrell and, and Darren, y'all personally made me see stars, you know, and, and nowadays that's a concussion. But but even, you know, some of the injuries, like a, 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 a sprained ankle, like I know my, my, my senior year, I just kept playing. Like maybe I should have sat out two or three weeks or four, you know, like, and we all just did it because we were going to play, play through it and play tough. And maybe, you know, and that was going to be John. He was like, I'm going to do what I can. But like, I know his body was also saying, man, you got got to get me fixed. And I could tell from the article that he did realize that. Um, And so that, that, you know, what, what was, how was his time you know, playing semi-professional football, and then what did he do in later years in life? Well, he worked for John. Worked, I mean, that's one thing he could do. He can find a job, you know? So, mm-hmm. like I said, he was down in Wisconsin working with one of the, uh, the shipyards, and then, you know, he was he, – John had a job when he was in high school, uh, junior high, going to high school, making twenty twenty five dollars. I told my dad, "I can I get a job?" I never forget that. You know, he had. You know, then when Cos came around, my brother didn't really do any work for Cos, but I know Rodney Howard and I worked at the restaurants after we had a game. We had to clean up a restaurant the next day. He got us a job or something like that. The guy called saying he needed help, but John always had a job. And then, like I say, he worked for Frito Lay, he worked for Nabisco. Okay. Uh, he, he worked for um, Kimberly Clark, which is the Pample Company, because yeah. my dad was in the grocery industry. And then, you know, they were looking for people to work during the summers and do this and that. And they paid good money back then when it wasn't a lot of money, you know. So then, like I said, then he got sick. He had an aneurysm. John drove all the way back from Wisconsin. I think he's working at a shipyard down there or something. And he made it back to Newper News, and they had to rush him to the um, – MCV to have surgery by helicopter. That's when he first had that aneurysm. And, you know, then he got better. And then, you know, he was doing okay, doing pretty good. And then, you know, later in life, he got sick again, had a little mini stroke. Mm. Yeah, but other than that, you know, he was doing pretty good. You know, my mom was keeping okay. up check, so, but then he got sick. Then the last time he got mm. sick with this infection, John been in a uh, hospital, I think it was 12, 13 months, 14 days. Wow. He went in after his birthday, and this is 23 and 22. Yeah, 22, 23. Yeah. He went out his birthday in November, and he was getting better, get better. Then the care at some of the facilities, he kept sending them back to the hospital, back to the hospital. Mm. And then he never got better. And then that infection just mm. took over his body. But, you know, he endured the pain. And like I said, Mama, I tell my boxing matches, 12 rounds. He went 13 rounds, 14 days, you know, because wow. I talked to him. I said, hey, you going to be with me for Christmas? And he, he couldn't speak as much then, but he could communicate with his eyes. So, he, you know, he still had that linebacker. He'll follow you around the room, and then he'll start <laughs> saying something. 
And he nodded his head and said, yeah, I'm gonna be here with you. And then right after Christmas, then he started, like he started transitioning over, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was strong, so. Yeah, John, John was the first example of the distinction. Are you are you hurt or are you or, or are you injured? Injured. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's John, when he played with them two cast on. Yes. That's that was, unbelievable. That, that was I've the first example. That was the first example of you play hurt. Yeah. You don't you don't play injured. You know what I'm saying, and 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 that's 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 the that's the that's the legacy right there. Absolutely, see, I've, I've, never see, seen, see. I've never seen it done. I've yeah. never seen it done again. Period. Someone playing with two broke arms. <laughs> see, see, see. Now I'm gonna tell you. So, see, see, John, John messed me up though, uh, in, in raising my child, right? Because <laughs> see, you know, having having seen stuff like that, right? You know, seeing somebody play. You know, through some pain and whatnot, have you know? My, you know, my my son, he 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 could his, he could just uh, his fingernail get broke, and then we we got to stop everything. We we, right. we, got, we we got to go to MCB and and and, and get surgery and all kinds of stuff, man. Right, right. So, so you know, so this generation, this generation, I you know, I, I can't I can't bang with what they talk about, man. man yeah, it's, it, it, yeah, it's that's a little just different. like Coach Cars, you know, if you got hurt, you had an ankle sprain, he tell you put some ice on it, we gonna tape it up. Yeah, you know, yeah. so like you said, it started back at Bethel, you know, with cars, and yeah, then you know, you know who's gonna play, who was not gonna play by like because cars gonna if you get oh you got a cold, get on the line, we're gonna run it out of you, you know. <laughs> good, good training. I mean, that's what he did back then. Yeah. I'll never, I'll never forget it. You know, as long as we live, you know, cars, you know, he helped a lot of folks. Not just my wow. brother. He helped. He helped us all in some way, yeah, shape, form, or fashion. Absolutely. You know. Yeah. And then, like I say, it's just been a learning thing. But then you see the kids today. How they is is not the same. They crying like Darren said. Hey, I got to go over here for this. I got to check that. It's just a different breed. Yeah. I, look, 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 I, I, I give you a great example, man. So, you know, for my son, my son, he, you know, up here in the Washington D.C. area. They for a little league, you can have you have teams with unlimited weight, right? So it's really just mm-hmm. age based, you know. You know, we 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 play, you know, intermediates and all that and juniors and stuff. But here it's unlimited weight, right? So I, my son's team was always the bigger guys, the guys that were going to go into high school and do something, right? And so I coached his his middle school. I'm gonna call it middle school team, right? Now I can tell you right now, Mama Fullwood. And Mama Britt and Mama Wallace and, and Mama Morris. Not one time did I ever see them come to a practice and, and, <laughs> and, and disturb and disturb what we was doing. Yes, not one time. Right. Now, when I was coaching Darius, would I tell you if you could just draw the the line around the field, the mamas would have they 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 chairs yep. right on that line. And like if you said something, I you know like I remember when we was uh, playing at Mallory and Coach. Um, Coach Patrick would say, you know, like, oh, boy, get your ass out there on the field or something like that, right? <laughs> right. Man, you you curse at them kids, you go get a talking to at the end of practice, bro. Right. Yeah, that's what I said. It's different. Different yeah. reason. <laughs> Darren, you, bro, you are preaching. I, I coached my son's team one year, <clears throat> and, and, and you talked about cars impacting people in different ways. As much as I thought he was hard <laughs> or he was this or that, like, and Coach Inko too, I ended up coaching like those guys, you know, <laughs> like that was my style and I didn't even realize, it. and <clears throat> a lot of people, parents aren't feeling that style, but like you said, Darren, I'm coaching and this pa- parents got their little lawn chairs and they all around and, mm-hmm. and I got mad because I'm trying to teach the kids some technique for defense and stuff and hey, talking off to the side and people not really focused or paying attention and I was like, I would be in a heartbeat. I would blow my whistle. Give me a light. And I said something like, y'all ain't doing crap. I said, get your butts up and run around. Man, do you know the other, the, a parent sent an email saying that I was abusive and I was using foul language. I didn't even say ass. I said butt. <laughs> right. <laughs> and I was like, I can't do this, man. I, yeah. I can't it- do it. It's different. And I, I've taught off and on. I mean, I, not taught, but I've coached off and on for about 
15 years down here in Texas. And don't you know the first drill after stretch that we did was some form of spoke? Some form right. of spoke, brother. Uh, yeah, you know, I, it's like, listen, <laughs> right here at the start of practice, dude, we're going to find out who, what kind of character this team has yeah. right, <laughs> right off the bat. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, so, so it, you know, as much as we hated doing it, can you imagine practice Bethel football without it? No, right. you know, no. what I what, what, what I was taught by cars with pain was your body is shut down. Your body is shut down when you when your body's done, it'll shut down. Your mind is shut down. Your body is shut down. Your mind is telling you you can't do it. Yeah. No, no, your body will let you know. That was that's that's what I got from cars. Yeah. You know, no quit. Yeah, no quit, man. <laughs> no quit. I, I, yeah, y'all remember them times we we might not have did so well on a scrimmage or a game, and uh, they would uh, pull practice the, with the lights on. Bars up yeah. to the to the field. Yeah, yeah. The lights on. They took. I think they took the bus out there one night. I yeah. think they took the yellow bus and yeah. then yeah. still brought the car. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah. let me let me ask you if you remember this. If you quit, cars would send the whole team out. Oh yes, yes. You remember that? <laughs> yes. Oh my god. Oh, it's yeah. no quit. Yes. It's no oh quit. My god. Yeah, that's yeah. what I learned from all of that. I teach that right now. No or, quit. Or or, or I, I remember because I was like I said, I was in the eighth grade. <laughs> and Y'all wouldn't have a good game or something, and then y'all had been y'all coming to the JV game the next morning. The next morning, running laps, running the whole the whole first half. 18. Yeah, whole team. Yeah. The whole so, first so, half. Yeah. I'll tell you this. Yeah. I, so when you talk about his Dan, I don't know if it was your senior year or our senior year, but we were scrimmaging Norview, and we didn't. I don't know. It might even have been your. Uh oh. Uh, I know. I know you about to we go. We didn't with even. This. I don't even think we got beat bad or didn't play that. He thought we didn't play well. He, this was after the scrimmage. He told us to lie, put, put us on the line, and we was running hundred yard sprints. Yeah, the yeah. Line. And at the Norview. Norview fans started at, laughing at us. It was at Norview. It was oh, at wait, Norview. Wait, wait, wait. Can, can, I, can I add to this? Can I add and to this? And it was story? on the field, and it was like a gunshots. Can, can I add to the story before the hundred yard yeah. uh, uh, dash? He made me crab around the whole field. Yes, yes. And I had to yes. crab through the Norview team side. <laughs> and, what and they was looking at me like, "Yo, this this fool right here, this fool right here." <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. Darren did teach me a lot of what not to do with cars. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you, Darren was crabbing a lot. <laughs> a lot. I'm gonna tell you because Darren's problem was this: he's so intelligent. He's thinking here, and the coaches are here, and they're like, "What are you yeah. talking about? You don't get it." And Darren's already a step or two ahead of all those coaches because he was so smart. He was know, a philosopher. Buddy. He was a philosopher. Yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> we, we had we had KRS one on our team. <laughs> go ahead, man. Go ahead. Go ahead. Look, look. I was I was just preparing the next generation so they didn't they wouldn't have to go through all that, you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. But you know, much like in some of the guys here in fraternities, man, that going through those tough times brought us together. And we've got these things, these bonds that if I don't see a Darren Fullwood for 20 years, it ain't nothing. Like I we just start rapping and we ain't, we ain't skipping the beat, man, because we went through it. And I pledged, you get some of you guys pledged, not the right fraternity, but you pledged. <laughs> <laughs> if you had pledged out for five hours, you would know that it was very much like being a part of that Bethel tour days, man. And, be, and, 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 and like I said, I remember when DD Van was the airplane and he was knocking us off. So I had to stay, stay alert. Terrell didn't take any sympathy on any of us young guys, man, when he beat, <laughs> man, he beat squad against the varsity. Like I oh. said, we played that when, when we played Ferguson, because I had finally moved up full time to varsity. We played Ferguson. I had to be one of the Solomon brothers. 
and y'all was killing me. And then I had to be lumpkins when we would put and, and and like, but but those times it was tearing me up. But those are the times I'm going back and I'm telling these stories, man. Like, yo, that 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 was that was what brought us together, man. Mm-hmm. And the last thing I'll say is, and I mentioned this one time how as much as hard as y'all were on us, but like you could all you also nurturing. And I'll never forget like sitting on when I was in 10th grade, we were sitting on the on the bus varsity game and I'm and I and I'm starting to actually play and I sat by Diddy Van and I said this on one of the shows before. Y'all remember we used to get stars and yeah yeah stars. nobody could do this today but we would literally get skull and crossbones because you yeah. knock somebody out right yeah. and I remember Didi Van Helmet has you see those stars back there Didi had so many stars it was looking green and I was sitting beside him, and he had so many, he gave me a star. And I was like, yo, I only had that one star, but it was like, and I had to earn it, but I was like, yo, I'm, I was trying to show my mom and show her star. I ain't earn it, but like, I looked up and like I tell people today, like, can't nobody tell me my favorite Bethel player of all time is Didi Van. Cause he did that and that impacted me, man. It meant something. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it was cruel. Yeah. Uh, I remember in, in training in two days, Cos brought us up the JV to scrimmage during the varsity. Uh, and it, we, we, it, it lasted all of about four or five plays. And then Cos was <laughs> like, Yeah, okay, somebody gonna get killed. John was literally, John and Terrell were like taking people's heads off. <laughs> <laughs> hey, yeah. scrimmage, that was hey. the shortest scrimmage in the history of football. <laughs> you think about this. Think about this with DD Van. Think about this with DD Van also. You got a guy like DD Van that that ran on the state four by one hundred relay team. So you got, a, team. you got a lineman. You got a lineman coming with you at 100, 200 speed. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? DD was a lineman with us. So you got a lineman. That's running, running people down. Just, I mean, got track, simple track speed. So right. that's what I was saying about those teams. And you had linemen that ran on state championship relay teams. Yep. So, yep. so imagine somebody, that's that's what y'all got, whether we realize it at the time or not, which I just played, man. I ain't care about nothing. I just wanted to play. And that was that. But I ain't think about how big these guys was, you know, the speed, the force they coming with you at. None of that. You know, you just you just played. But Didi, yeah. Didi, man, I'm telling you, he ran that. He could have ran. ran the, he could have ran the hundred. Yeah, he ran the two hundred, but he could have ran the hundred, and he's coming at you with that kind of speed. Yeah, so, I'll never forget John and Terrell with those uh, yeah. those those big spot belt cleats they used to wear. Hey, I think we was the last group to really wear those. I think we was the last group to really wear those spot bills. Uh, yeah, those I screw think. Ons. The spot what, bills what screw it, our, your, your, your junior year, your senior year, Terrell, didn't we still have the white Converse screw-ins? Yeah, we were all, we were all white when we played Hanson one time. See, so that was unheard of. Right. Yeah, we That's changed. Right. Yeah, they didn't, you know. Yeah, that was could, unheard could, of. Yeah, because we come out in one, black. yeah, that was unheard. Then they had Mike Smith on the it. tape, you know, they recorded him on the other side. And Kyle showed it to us, he was, he was pissed off. Yeah, you couldn't wear white back then. No, yeah, no, I and we beat him. That was the first yeah. time we wore it. That's when we beat him. Right, yeah, we beat, we yeah. can't, yeah, we beat oh, yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that game. Wow. We, we, we was on one that game. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was our sophomore year. That was, uh, yeah, that Terrell, that was your senior year, I believe. Yeah, uh, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. My, ju- my junior year. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that was my sophomore year because I was playing as a sophomore then. Yeah. I'm, yeah. T- I'm telling you, man, my, my sophomore year and my junior year, those two, those two teams, they could they could do a 30 for 30 on them two teams, man. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. No yeah. Doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm telling you, if that we if y'all if we could line up that 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 those two years against any high school team today. Oh yeah. my God. Come on, man. Oh yeah. We run Paul through them. Yeah. We Bain, run through them. Eco. Right. Rodney Howard. Howard. Carl Barker. Yeah. 
The Greg, line, the line, Greg at the, Greg Greg, at the yeah. The yeah. line, the line was Little Winko played center. Yep. Little Winko played guard. Grimes played beside him. Uh, who else? Ah. Was Ingo tackle a guard? Ingo, Ingo was guard because I think he was a pulling guard or a tackle. I think he played yeah. guard. He was a guard. Oh, he, he was a guard. guard. It was little, Grimes. Little, little, Grimes. Little Ingo moved to center. Little yeah, Ingo was at center. Ingo was center. Yeah. Grimes was at a tackle. Grimes. Uh, Carl Watts was at a tackle. Carl Watts. Uh, man. I ain't Duck, never seen Duck, 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 somebody else. else. Look, Kenny Taylor. Kenny Taylor, all Kenny Taylor was at tight end. Players on one Kenny team, Taylor played bro. tight end, yeah. On one team. On one the, team. All the D1 players. I mean, both of the Incos, Grimes, Carl Watts, D.D. Vance, Barker. Kenny Taylor. Uh, Curtis Taylor, Potton, yeah. Uh, Jason Wallace, Greg Morris, Rodney Howard, Terrell Brown. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, you. Yeah, you we had a lot I mean, of folks. Just, you know, man, I just actually didn't stop it. Another go play that many kids and, going and, off. And, and think about it, we went and played Hampton, who had just as much talent. And that's just, I, and again, I, we, a lot of people debate and talk about stuff, but like one of the things I, I'm like, we call it the seven five seven now. But really, really, it was the PD. But even really, really, it was Ham the city of Hampton that yeah. ran this state. You're talking about, and now we just go over these last 50 years. Yeah. Hampton, Bethel, and Phoebus combined have 29 state championships. Mm. That's just the city of Hampton. So I, I, I'll say 757, but I'm really just, I'm proud of my city, man. Yeah. <laughs> high school. Yeah. And kicking 10, if they weren't in our city, would be just dominating. Yeah. Yeah. And someone yeah. mentioned earlier, I don't know who it was, someone mentioned earlier, you know, about, you know, it's not just the football. Kirk, I think it was you mentioned about the track and field. Yeah, yeah, so yeah track and field. We had track and field, football, basketball. Those yeah. are really the sports for us back then. Yeah. You know, yeah. baseball wasn't really in for mm -hmm. us like that, you know. Because Coach Bouchard, coach the defensive backs, he was a coach for baseball. Yeah, baseball. Yeah. 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 But, you know, we didn't have all the other sports that got in there. But, this but the thing. Like, huh? We had some great baseball players, but they just transitioned over the track. A lot of y'all was ballers at baseball when you were young playing these baseball. Yeah. yeah Boo, you know? Who won a lot of, lot of district championships. He right. won a lot yeah. of games. Yeah. Belter was coach. known yeah. for baseball. Yeah. 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 Seven is actually a. a well, lately, uh, Justin and B.J. Upton, David Wright, mm -hmm. um, yeah. uh, who, who else? Sean Doolittle is from Virginia Beach. And, uh, 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 the kid for Washington, the Nationals, Ryan Zimmerman, UVA guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. The, back, yeah. The, the, the baseball was very good, just that, you know, a lot of baseball players are from Florida and Southern mm -hmm. California because you can play year-round. That's a big deal to, to be able to play during the winter. So yeah. right, great yeah. players at Beth at Bethel and Hampton. Yeah, well, yeah. So, Kiki Tan had a guy that pitched in the pros. Tim, my uh, mama, he went to UVA. You know, I'm talking about Jason. Yeah, I know you're talking Tim about Burton. Uh, Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's Tim Burton. Yeah, yeah. Frankie yeah. Driver made it all. Frankie way. Driver. We played. We played play at Maui together. I he, yeah, I remember that I'll name. Tell you this. Um, Theo Johnson used to play mm -hmm. semi pro baseball league in the summer. Oh, Theodore, well, he was well, that he like three or four straight yeah. no hitters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <clears throat> Theo used to do it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Guys, we we could literally do this all night. Mm -hmm. I want to try to wrap this up a little bit by if every if any if 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 every if you have any one last thing you want to say about John. You can say that. And then um, I just want our audience to know, you know, if you could just tell us a little bit, you know, minute two, whatever, however long you want, but, but what you're doing now, what you've done since your, your time at Bethel. So, um, Darren, we'll start with you since you got here a little late. Any other thoughts on John Britt? Yeah, man, like I said, um, you know, so now I, um, I am the uh, site leader for uh, Amazon's new corporate headquarters up in Crystal City, Virginia. You know, we um, we are building two campuses uh, in Crystal City, uh, two and a half billion dollars of uh, infrastructure, and we're going to have about thirty thousand new Amazonians uh, there. 
Nope. And I say that to say, man, you know, I'm just I'm just a dude from one needed drive, you know. Mm-hmm. And right. and every time I think about that, you know, what you know how life has gone, it's been great. And I and I have to tell you, you know, it is not it is not hyperbole when I say that John Britt it what not taught me how to lead. He taught me how to how to fight through adversity, you know. And as we all know in life, you know, everything don't always go our way. You know what I'm saying? And, and and I really did learn that from him. I kept that with me and whatnot have you and was just able to press through. So I appreciate John for his leadership and for being an you know, integral part of my life, um, uh, both, the, both the highs and the lows. Mm. Yeah, thanks, Darren. Greg. Um... First of all, I love the dude. Absolutely. Um, you know, John, John taught me, me and as well everyone else, um, toughness. Toughness. John, um, he taught me, he, he taught me how to play the game from finish to start. From finish to start, because he was gonna give it to you. You know, regardless, I don't care if you was uh, one of the top on the team or whatever. John was gonna gonna give it to you if you got out of line. Period. <clears throat> so you know, John taught me that no matter how good you are, man, you can be checked. Mm-hmm. You can be checked. So you know, I went through a lot with John. <clears throat> like I said on and off the field. And Terrell, the reason you don't know a whole lot of that because you was protected. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I said, I said that at the field, yeah. I said yeah, that at the field, Yeah, protecting you, man. So, you know, um, just those things, man. Just on and off the field, man. Just playing against them, playing with them. You know, so those things, man, good memories. Nothing but yeah. good memories, man. I don't really have a bad memory with John. Right. So. so- no, go ahead. No, I would say, Greg. Uh, now, Darren, he mentioned it a little bit, and he and he's our. We've profiled him, um, but can you just tell us what you've done? Because you're doing some great things um, in the community and with your life. Can you tell folks kind of what happened over the last thirty plus years? Which, what, what, and what you do now? Um. Well, military. Uh, went in the military for eight years, six active, two reserve. Um. Right now, uh, I went to school a few times, um, you know, and didn't get a degree. And then later on in life, um, here and in the the past 10 years, um, got my bachelor's and stuff. And um, I started a uh, mentoring program in 2017, the mentoring tutoring program. Uh, I work in the school system right now with autistic kids. Oh, man. Um, Oh, wow. A uh, couple, couple other teachers um, put programs in the school for the elementary age kids, flag football and basketball. I started, um, started one at uh, one school here in Sweetwater. Did it for two years. Um, did it for a year. Actually, the first year we won our championship, second, third grade team. Um, then COVID hit us, shut us down. Um, I left the school system, actually did some social service work, got back in the school system. Now, um, like I say, we started those kids playing uh, basketball and flag football at an elementary age, you know, and um, coach that, <clears throat> coach a team um, that's sponsored by the Hawks, the Junior Hawks, and I coach my son actually in the middle school league. So just staying busy, um, coaching, coach Let's football, go. basketball. Um, so I coach a little soccer. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> I think we all did because our kids are like, we ain't playing no soccer. But unheard of. I heard of. six years old. Yeah. Unheard I don't of. Know about soccer, but I know how to just lead and just throw the ball now, out there. But yeah. We might have did a segment of it in elementary school or something, but other than that, <laughs> you know, soccer wasn't. Now my son is a great soccer player, but. Uh, COVID shut that down, so now he just plays football and basketball. So he he's uh he's eleven. Last at a bunch, I think my wife just been tricking me for the last twenty three years. So <laughs> he he came along way after he. I don't know where he come. My next is eleven. <laughs> they eleven years apart. So 
you know, so um, God don't make no mistake, mistake, so he keep me busy. Hey, man, the plumbing still works. Yeah. <laughs> keep me busy and he keep me honest. Darren, uh, oh, oh, well, you got a chance to meet him. He was with me at the funeral. Yeah, the funeral. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, he, he keep me honest and he keep me busy. So, you know, man, life I, changes. us. Life is changing. I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm so. I'm so glad that young man looked like his mama, man. <laughs> Whatever, man. You know I never had a problem getting a girl. No <laughs> yeah, but um, life has blessed me, man. Um, with four kids, um, two girls, two boys. So I've been blessed, man. So, you know, I have no complaints, man. And it was great. You know, it, it's sad that it took for my man to pass, yeah. you know, for us to see each other and get back with each other. But like I say, God don't make no mistakes. And hey, this must have been the time for us to get together and right. see each other. So it's a blessing seeing all you guys, man. And I love all you guys, man. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, though. Thanks. Jay? Yeah. Like I said earlier, I touched on this a little bit, but, you know, John was, I was just a wide eyed, just young football player, just thought I was going to play in the eighth grade and just just because I thought it was the right thing to do. Little did I know uh, all of the very important lessons that John Britt was able to teach me just by watching him. Uh, we already talked about your, the intensity, but as a as a small guy, I always reminisce back on the perfect form tackling machine that John and Terrell Britt were, and mm -hmm. the that that focus. You know, Cos, y'all, we all know how much Cos preached fundamentals, mm -hmm. and and. John and Terrell executed the art of tackling better than anybody I've ever been around. And that carried on uh, it, it within me throughout, you know, a, a, a fairly long football career. And, um, you know, one thing I never shied away from was being, being, uh, you know, sticking my head in there and, 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 and hitting somebody uh, and doing so with, with that level of intensity that, that John displayed every day on the practice field. And then the other thing is just what it meant to the, that, that sanctity of the locker room uh, and the tradition of what it takes to build yourself up to get ready to play a very violent sport. That's the other thing that I learned from, from the Brit brothers that I carried on throughout the rest of my career. And never before, like, and Darren, you mentioned it. It, it was never, it was never the same. And I, I played with some great guys on some great teams and it was never the same. But in my mind, I always, before a football game, went back to Beth Bethel High School to get my, myself ready to play. I always went back there from a, from a, from a mental perspective and an emotional perspective. And that all started at Bethel High School at Darlin Stadium with John and Terrell Britt. So um, that, that's that's just my, that's the legacy that, 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 that lot lives on within me that, that I learned from, from John. Um, you know, I played for a, a long time after, after uh, college in both the NFL and the, the Canadian Football League. Then I finally stopped working. 9-11 hit, went back to school, uh, got my MBA with a concentration in healthcare administration. And I've been in healthcare ever since. And uh, so right now I'm the, the chief operating officer of, of a healthcare company. We are a community health clinic network. Um, and we primarily serve the underserved communities. Uh, so mm. it's, it feels good to, uh, you know, go to work and at the end of the day, know that, you, you know, you're helping people 
uh, that necessarily don't necessarily have the means to go get help anywhere else. So uh, that's 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 my life now. And and like all of y'all, you know, just I started a family late. So you talk about having to stay stay young. You know, I got a five year old little boy. <laughs> Uh, I got an eight-year-old little girl, and I got a sixteen-year-old uh, a stepdaughter. So they keep me uh, they keep me busy. They keep me keep me young, keep me active. And um, you know, uh, once I started getting had my, my had my son, that's when I finally stopped coaching football. But I was coaching football down here for uh, you know probably about 15, 15 years. So uh, that's it. Yeah, that's awesome. James. Cool. Yeah. Cool. And 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 Jason is also a world-renowned Zumba instructor. Zumba. He's got followers <laughs> all over the world, man. Oh wow! Yeah, man, gotta 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 find a way find a way to stay in shape, man. But that, it's, yeah. uh, it, that, it's, that was an unexpected uh, inspiration, and that's that's another thing. Just trying to impact people's lives through fitness is a, is another another passion of mine. Oh, good deal. Hey you, all, hey, you always had a lot of discipline, bro. Yeah. That's what I do know about Jason. Always had a lot of discipline. A That's lot great. of self. Had, had a lot of great ones to learn from, man. A lot, <laughs> a lot of, great of great discipline, ones to learn man. Yeah, always. And, and to plug Jason, you were in Charlottesville 160, 165 pounds. 164 my freshman year. And you were, I remember a play where you were covering Rocket Ismail over the middle in the Meadowlands, and I believe that was 89, wasn't it? That was the, yeah, that was 89. That was the year after they won the national championship. Yeah. I remember, and, and, so, and, see, that was old hat for Juice. You know, they played Notre <laughs> Dame every year, but I re I'll never forget, I was laying in bed over the Christmas holiday at home, and my mom and dad came in there and woke me up and said, hey, I just saw in the news that Y'all, UVA is playing Notre Dame in the kickoff classic first right. game of the college football season next year. I was like, I immediately hopped up. I, I went and started trying to work out. But it was funny. It was it, it, the ironic thing. It, it was similar to being an eighth grader at Bethel and seeing the difference, oh. the different level wow. of, of, of what I had been uh, accustomed to uh, it was the same way going, you know, going to play Notre Dame, and, and you know, after that, you know, we 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 won the second half. You know, we were starstruck in the first half. You know, uh, <laughs> Juice, you remember this, but but Tony Rice came up to the uh, to the to the on the first play of the game. He came up to the to the uh, to the center, and Jerome Bettis is it, and Ricky Waters are in the backfield. Rocket Ishmael is is out at the yep. receiver. Yep. Uh, I forget the big tight end they had, um, but he, he ended up playing in the NFL for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, and Tony Rice started laughing before he uh, he took the first. <laughs> <time>. <laughs> and and uh, it was it was crazy, man. But you know, like all of y'all said, you know, from where we came from, you know, you you know you you gonna hey they they what is what did Kaz used to say? They put their pants on one leg at a time. Leg at a time. Just like just like you do, you know. And uh, <laughs> you know, after that first hit, you know, you 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 settle down and, and you yeah. do what you gotta yeah. do. Yeah. You was yeah. well groomed, man. You was already well groomed for that. Yeah, you prepared for it. That's true. He was already yeah. well groomed for that mentally and, and physically. Even though his body stature was small, he was already well groomed for all of it. Was the yeah, Dan was an undersized defensive back, you know, playing playing against you know those big those big boys too. And, uh, yeah. and you know, Dan, did you play was, Tim Brown? I, I did play Tim Brown, mm -hmm. uh, and 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 the Rocket and Ricky Waters. Yeah, that, 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 well that, that whole crew, yeah. man. <clears throat> yeah. See, for us, for us looking at them, just like Jason said, hey man, you put your pants on just like I do. Right. And guess what? I'm coming at you every play. That's yeah. all I know. That's all I know. So, you know, you ready. You're just ready for it. You build, you just built like that and ready for it. Yeah, Ooh. I think they come a lot from college, you know, preparing yeah. you, you know. Yes. I think Monday was, you know, we did whatever for practice. Then Tuesday was offense. I think Wednesday, if I remember, mm -hmm. was defense. Mm -hmm. Thursday, you're putting the special teams together. Then you're either playing on Friday or right. Saturday. 
You know, yeah. you knew the other players' names. Like you said, yeah. I remember you said something about Pew for Kickatan. Yeah. You know, you yeah. knew where he was at in the backfield. Oh, man. Yeah. You know, and then when we started yeah. calling his name out, you know, he's like, you know, hey, what did he got? These guys know where I'm at. Hey, you know, so Cos prepares you for life, not just yeah. for football. He prepares you for life right. after football. And he showed right. you he showed you how how to get prepared. Yeah. So, so you ain't have to, you stay ready, you ain't have to get ready. Correct. When I hear people today talk about, you know, speak stuff to it into an existence, that ain't nothing but psychocybernetics. Genetics. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and we'll, we'll finish with you, Terrell, um, with any last thoughts, and you can kind of give us an update of what you've been, um, been up to. But uh, I, I, I will say that um, one of the things that stuck out to me was um you know we 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 were a tight knit group but not and you you know, we mentioned all those great players but like there were guys that never played football for Bethel but were going to the school because they didn't want that smoke like I'm talking they were good at Northampton they were good at Mallory and you were like yo that they didn't want, they could, they, if they came out, they didn't last, but some never even came out because they knew whether it was having to get hit by John or Terrell or Darren or just Kaz. Like, Kaz was a legend. Like, people were afraid to be a part of that program. And so, just being, I mean, look, all of y'all were, were clear superstars. I was an average player. I got some time, whatever. But there were guys that didn't get in the game, but I got respect for them because they played at Bethel under Cos. And right. that, you know, and that took a lot, man. That took a lot. But go ahead, Terrell. Well, I mean, I did over what everybody said about my brother. You know, it's, I mean, we could talk for hours about John Brett. And it's not just about him. It's about all the other folks that have helped get us to this point. But, you know, like I said, hey, I, I worked for Nabisco when I came out of college. Then I went over to, I started at Kiva as an internship when I was in college. And I went to Nabisco and got a full-time job. Then from Nabisco, I went to Coca-Cola. And from Coca-Cola, I went to Dominion Power. So I remember when you guys were first talking about Virginia Tech and UVA, if you, if you had an engineering degree, you know, but Dominion going to pick you up. You know, you, you, I mean, it's just been the thing, you know, but yeah. So then, like I said, I worked with Dominion and then um, after Dominion, I, I stayed with Dominion probably 15 years. Yeah, 15 years. Then when I left Dominion, I was going to work with Wyndham because a friend of mine at Cope had recruited me to come work with him at Wyndham, but my dad got sick. So my dad, I'm not, I'm not even sure everybody knows, my dad died in May of last year. Oh, May 20th. Yeah, my dad died May 21st. Hmm. My brother died December 27th. What's that? Seven months, May, May, yeah, seven months, six days yeah. that they're hmm. apart from dying from each other, you know? So I've been kind of helping my dad, taking care of my dad. Then when my brother got sick, I've been helping that because Jason had to kind of text me or something, tell me what was going on and saying, hey, his mom and dad getting up of, of age. And I said, well, I can truly understand. My mom's still doing good, but my dad was sick. So yeah. then I took on that role as being a caregiver for him because my, my mom couldn't handle my dad by herself. And then I said, mm -hmm. hey, I don't want you to go into a nursing home. So, you know, that's where I kind of been at. Then my brother got sick, and then I started taking care of the both of them, helping them out. And now, like I said, I probably do something else here later, probably get back into the work field or something like that. But after I left the million, and then I was at Wyndham. Um, I wanted to go take care of my dad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What's up? What's up? Much respect to you, it's a blessing for, for doing that. We yeah, can appreciate it. do those things for the people we love, man. Oh, yeah. So, guys, I cannot thank you all enough for taking the time. I told you, like, our goal was 50 minutes, but we, we blew past that. We, we're way over two hours. But that's, because, <laughs> that's the impact that brother had on on so many people, yeah. you know, yeah. and uh, he blessed a lot of people, man. And, and, and like, like Jason said, um, you know, John Britt is truly, truly a Bruin legend. And one of the things, one of the reasons we do this show, kind of like what Darren said is, man, let's celebrate people while they're alive. 
Now we yeah. this is the first time we celebrated him on the past, but I'm glad that I've had a chance to have Jason Wallace on, Darren Fullwood on, Rodney Howard on. Man, let's celebrate these guys while they're alive. And so I appreciate you guys joining me. Greg, you don't know, but man, I looked up to you so much. And then when I got to Bethel, we were still running the option in the wishbone, and I was a JV quarterback. I wanted to be Greg Morris. Morris, that's right. That's right. I'm Greg Morris is who I wanted to be. Nobody else. That, man. Hey, let me tell you, nobody, <laughs> nobody ran that 30 read like Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, Jay, I don't know if you remember, man. You remember a couple of Saturday mornings working on that? Yes. Working on that with yes, you? Yes, I do. Oh, that read I and do. that flick, that wrist. I do, man. <laughs> Great. Like yesterday. Hey, man, I appreciate I y'all guys, man. Yeah, appreciate it, too. <laughs> Thanks so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I played flag football for over 20 years here in Northern Virginia. Everybody throws the ball mostly. I was running the option, bro. I was running the option in flag football because I'm oh, cause man. Of Greg Morris. Yeah. I played football in the Army for a couple years, man. I managed to get them to run that, man. Run that wishbone, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. I teach it to my little kids, man, but they, don't, they just don't understand, man. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah that's true. Man. Yeah. But look, thanks again, guys. Kirk, you have any closing remarks? Oh, it's been a lot of fun to listen to you guys, the storytelling. And, uh, you know, it's enjoyable to sit back and listen. I People that know me from 30 years ago probably couldn't believe that I could sit here for two hours and not say anything as much as I have. Because <laughs> you teach. I'm going to talk. But I would say this for people watching, and I, I would think we're going to get a lot of first-time viewers. We've profiled all the Bethel people, including Chris Jackson, Corey Stewart, We've done Mike Smith, a great interview with Mike Smith. What other crabbers have we had? We have some other. Randy Pearson's been on here, uh, but we've had um, the Rocky Croom. Rocky Croom. Okay. Uh, we've had Ray Washington from uh, Kickatan, who played point guard there in St. Joe's. So we, we've got a lot of Peninsula people on. We've got some tech. We got some UVA. So yeah, um, just check us out. There's other things on there, and then other people will come to us and say, hey. If this didn't happen in the game. They'll come and say, "Hey, you should talk to so and so." I talk to them, so let us know. It's it's right. a lot of fun. Well, so, wait, it, hold it, on. We also had we had a Bruin who was in school with maybe cross with you guys a little bit. Ron Peterson played baseball right. at Bethel and went on to play at Radford, but he's a well-known author now, a true crime author. He came okay. out. When did he come out in eighty-three? Eighty-three. He mm-hmm. came on 83. So Ron Peterson was on the show and we just highlight, you know, what, what, what how great some people are doing. So check some of those things out. Um, I just want to, again, thank you, Darren Fullwood, for, uh, you know, help coordinate this and the things you're doing in the community. Um, and, and, and so I appreciate that. So for Darren Fullwood, Jason Wallace, Greg Morris, and, and my dog, Terrell Britt, um, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you for, for doing this. This has been the Kirk and Bird Show. We are out.